Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm excited that you're here uh, for um, what will be uh, my last time um, uh, being on uh, the air with you guys. And so um, first off, we have to get important things out of the way. Uh, today is Cinco de Mayo, right? It's Taco Tuesday, okay? But more importantly, Jennifer, I'm going to interview you on camera right now. Okay. Why do we celebrate? Why do we? Why do uh, people of, of, of Mexican heritage celebrate Cinco de Mayo? So Independence Day, right? It's their Independence Day? It celebrates the day that the Mexican army defeated uh, the French army um, at the Battle of Pueblo on May 5th, 1865. Uh, the, the, the French army was, was uh, um, you know, they were kind of like the, uh, the superpower at that time. Led by Napoleon III, not the short one that we always talk about. This was like two Napoleons after that. Um, so that's why we celebrate this. So I just thought that was kind of a fun little interesting uh, tidbit to throw in there. Um, I say teacher appreciation day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would love some free chips and queso for teacher appreciation day, but that's that's neither here nor there. Um, so over the past couple of weeks, I've got a lot of questions, um, a lot of texts. Um, about um, gardening and um, how to grow uh, your own food, where to get seeds at, what type of soil to use, and, and those types of things. And so if you've been following along, we've talked about soil the very first time. Uh, we've talked about um, some dairy stuff. Um, we're going to kind of combine everything that we've talked about over the past three weeks into today through the guise of gardening. Um, and so yesterday... Um, Got some wood um, that I had at the house as well as uh, went and bought just a, a couple of planks, and I built a box garden. And so um, I'm sure you've seen these like if you're on like Pinterest or, or Facebook or whatever social media app that, that you so choose. And so I built one. It took me about uh, maybe an hour, and that was um, also you know not, not working – uh, at feverish pace, um, but it's something real simple that, that you guys can make. And so basically, I just made a four, uh, a four foot long by two foot box. It is just uh, uh, I have some, um, plywood down at the bottom there. Um, it's seven inches tall all the way around. Something real simple that you can fill with um, some gardening soil and you can make um, your own little garden at home. And so we're going to talk about um, if you had something like this or if you built something like this, what would it take to kind of get started, right? So you would need to know a couple of different things, um, what to put in it, what kind of seeds to get, how do you manage the, those different things. And that's um, going to be what we talk about today. Okay, um, next. Okay, so the first question is, uh, Mr. Hostick, I got a box, right? What do I put in said box? Okay, so there's basically you have three different kinds of options. Okay, uh, we have topsoil, compost, and then a mix of the two. All right, topsoil is good because it's going to have good structure. So if you think back to um, our soil lesson, okay, uh, soil structure and, and the, the components of will determine how much water and nutrients basically that soil can hold. Okay, topsoil is good at holding water. Okay, um, so it's not going to dry out as fast. As a, as a compost, um, as well as it's also cheaper than the other ones and it doesn't smell necessarily as bad, okay? Contrast that with compost when we talk about um, the, the advantages of that is going to be, it's gonna have more nutrients, right? And so when we talk about those different components of soil, right, the smallest one um, was organic matter, okay? And so your compost is basically a bunch of organic matter that is breaking down um, and decomposing, okay? So it's going to be a little bit more expensive because you more or less have to manufacture it. Um, sometimes it can smell bad, um, but it's going to be more nutrient-dense. And so you may be thinking to yourself, well, why don't we just combine the two? And that's exactly what uh, um, uh, has happened and is actually what is ideal. So if you take a mixture of topsoil and compost that is finely ground, so we get all of the big uh, pieces out of it, 
okay, and use that mix, that's going to be ideal for any type of home gardening um, that you're going to do. If you have a big area that you're going to till up and, and those sorts of things, this really doesn't apply, but this is talking about if you are going to maybe redo a flower bed, you're going to make a raised bed garden, um, those kinds of things. A good mix of topsoil and compost is going to be absolutely ideal um, to put in um, your new garden. Okay, so you may be thinking, all right, now I know I'm going to put a mix of topsoil and compost into um, our garden, but what, uh, how much, or where do I get it at? Well, you can get it at most big box stores, hardware stores, those kinds of things. You can get it at, at Walmart and that kind of thing, okay? As a general rule of thumb, if you're going to do a raised bed garden, you need at least six inches of soil for, for that to be um, for, for that to basically contain uh, the root system and have enough nutrients for that plant to grow and develop throughout its life cycle. And that can be a little bit plant dependent, um, but for most garden plants, that's going to be, um, that's going to be more than, more than sufficient. Okay. Bags of compost are sold in cubic feet, usually uh, one and a half or two cubic foot per bag. Um, and depending on the size of the bag can determine things like cost um, and that sort of thing. But you may be thinking, okay, well, I just randomly threw this box, box together. How do I figure out how many cubic feet I need, right? So cubic feet, thinking back to um, maybe geometry is probably when you learned that, maybe earlier, okay, is length times width times height in feet, right? And so if we have a four-foot by two-foot box, okay, and we need six inches of soil, right, to be able to fill this, okay, if we multiply all those together, we get right at four cubic feet of soil, okay? These um, were one by fours, which, so this is a chasing a squirrel into a separate, separate dir uh, direction, but a one by four is not actually one inch by four inches, okay? It's actually going to be um, uh, three and a half inches by three quarters of an inch, okay? And so when we add these two together, there's seven inches total of depth that we have in our garden. So if we fill it six inches up, right, we have a one inch space up at the top to shield the little plants from wind and keep things from spilling out. Um, if we have to move this or whatever the case might be, it's almost like that's on purpose. Um, so anyways, we, we know now how to calculate um, how much to be able to put in there. Okay. And then the next thing we need to talk about is seeds, right? Um, kind of the most important thing. You can just put a, a box of dirt in your yard and it's not going to be very productive, right? We need to put um, something in there to be able to sprout. I have two examples here today. I have some miniature bell peppers and some rosemary um, that are actually going to be put into this whenever um, I go home. My wife's uh, happy about that, okay? Um, on the back of the package of seeds is going to be a lot of important information, Okay. And that can be found – am I pointing right at it there, Chris? Yes. Okay. Um, on there, we have days to germination, which is basically how many days is that seed going to take to sprout more or less. We're going to talk about the germination process here in a second. Okay. okay. In depth, days to harvest, and how far apart do we need to space um, our different rows. Okay. And we're going to talk about each of those um, different things um, individually um, as, we, as we go on here. Okay, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the different parts of the seed, okay, um, and they're going to be the same for pretty much all plants, and there's always, it's, ag and English are, are closer th than you think, there's rules, but there's always like an exception to the rule, okay, for the most part, these are all going to be the different parts um, of the seed, we're going to have an outer crust, um, that's going to be hard, that's going to protect the seed, called the seed coat, um, we're going to have the actual embryo inside of there um, that's going to be made up of a bunch of different pieces. We're going to have a part called uh, the, the endosperm, which is basically kind of a chalky material that um, fills kind of some of the voids and, and has some nutrient benefit for, for the developing embryo itself. Okay, But there's two different kinds, uh, or I guess rather how seeds are classified is there's two different kinds. We have monocots and we have dicots. So if you think of like a monorail, if you've ever been to, to Disney World or um, a monocle like the uh, Monopoly Man, right, is mono meaning one. Okay, um, So a monocot is going to have a single cotyledon, and a cotyledon is basically a fancy term for the first 
part of the plant that goes up, right? It's going to be the first part of the leaves and stem that comes out of the soil. Okay, the radical is the first part of the root that goes down. For this discussion, that's maybe not necessarily – that's just some extra information. Okay, so if a monocot only has one of those cotyledons, a dicot is going to have two, um, and there's some advantages and disadvantages to those, um, and that's maybe a little bit more in-depth than um, – our discussion today. But the, the, the important thing to, that we need to talk about is that seed coat, um, how it's going to protect the little embryo inside of the seed, um, but it's not a actual, like a, like a closed in, it's not like you put stuff in a bag and you seal it, right? It's going to be pulled out for gas exchange and water, and we're going to talk about why that's important here in a second. Okay. Uh, so germination is the process of taking <laughs> – is not the process of tripping over your microphone. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. But ger germination is the process of seeds developing into a new plant. Okay, And there's several factors that must be met in order for those to uh, – in order for germination to occur. That's going to be we're going to have to have the seed the, seed the correct – correct depth in the soil. We're going to have to have the appropriate am amount of water um, as well as the uh, right temperatures, whether that's the actual air temperature or the soil temperature. Um, we have to meet all of these different factors in order for that seed to germinate. And luckily for you, we can um, accomplish most of these things even on the window in your bedroom. Okay. Um, we're going to go into each of those a little bit more in depth here. Okay. When we talk about water, Okay, water is uh, right. You may have heard water is essential for all functions of life. Okay, it's definitely the case here. Okay, so that water, water is going to work its way into the soil. It's going to be absorbed into the seed uh, through a process called imbibation. And basically, that water's function is to not only fuel the processes of um, growth inside of that plant, but it activates an enzyme. And it's that enzyme is basically like an alarm clock that says, "Get up! It's time to start growing." Right, um, so it's going to tell that little embryo, oh, okay, I need to, I need to sprout, sprout, and I need to start growing now. Okay, we can have so if, if not enough water is present, okay, then that seed's not going to germinate, and that's kind of a survival uh, tactic, I guess, for for lack of a better term, um, for a seed not to germinate in conditions in which it's not going to be able to grow and be a viable plant. Um, if they just started growing just sporadically, right? They might not be able to become right a full mature plant. Same thing if there's too much water. Okay, those plants still need um, atmospheric gases to be able to um, breathe and survive. And so, if there's too much water, right, then that seed can drown. Okay, um, so that's not good. So all of these different factors that we're talking about fall within a range. Right, too little, not good. Too much, not good. We want to be in that happy median of these different factors. Okay, uh, temperature is, is another big factor. Um, certain varieties of plants, some um, cool, cool season plants, right, will require different temperatures to start the germination process than a warm season plant that might uh, be growing now as, as opposed to germinating in the fall or even early winter time. Okay, um, that temperature is mostly about so, uh, pertaining to the soil and is that soil temperature warm enough for this to occur? But also could be the air temperature, right? If a, if a seed germinates and starts to grow and then there's – all you know, the, the new little plant is exposed to you know, freezing air, um, then that can basically des destroy the process and, and kill the plant as well. This last one on, on here is kind of a fun little fact. There's certain um, species of grasses that actually require um, – for that seed to go through a fire um, to be able to start the germination process. And so um, back in the day before we had fire suppression and there was big grass fires that would sweep through uh, the central United States, um, certain species evolved and developed to require that fire to basically break apart that seed coat um, to allow water to get into it in order for that process, in order for that plant to start growing. I just thought that was, that was really cool. So you wouldn't think of like, as fire being essential for plant growth, in certain cases, um, it definitely can be. Okay, seed depth um, is also going to be very important. Okay, if it is um, too, sh if a seed is buried too shallow, okay, that root um, is basically not going to be able to get 
down deep enough to be able to hold that plant in place. It can wash away or be exposed to too much sun, um, and it can dry out and die. Okay, if it is buried too deep, that seed doesn't have enough stored nutrients for that embryo plant to be able to make its way through the soil profile and up to where photosynthesis can start. Okay, so it's again we're going to talk about that that range of too deep not good, too shallow, not good. We need to be in that happy median. And that's why, so on our different, um, on our different packs of seeds here, okay, our, our miniature bell peppers need to be a quarter inch um, below the, the surface of the soil. Um, and our rosemary is also at a quarter of an inch. Um, so not all plants require um, a quarter inch of depth. That's fairly universal, but definitely, but definitely not, um, not always the case, right? Some may, um, may be as little as an eighth of an inch of soil on, on top. Some may need to be even deeper, half inch, um, three quarters of an inch in order for uh, the right conditions to be met for that seed to germinate. Okay, we talked about the parts of a seed. Um, that's, that's, that's a lot of words. I'm going to break it down real simple for you. Okay, so basically water is going to enter the seed. Okay, those Enzymes within the seed are going to be activated starting the growth process. The radical or the tip of the first root that's going to go um, out, of, out of the seed is going to start to grow out and go down. That seed coat is going to crack open, okay? And those cotyledons are going to start growing towards, um, towards the surface, um, towards, towards the surface of the soil, okay? Then those first little leaves are going to start growing in the direction of uh, the sun. And that's photomorphogenesis. Um, it's a big word that basically says they grow towards towards the light. Okay, how much time do we have left? Okay, so what we're going to do um, here is I'm going to show you basically a good way to how you can start um, growing uh, seeds at home. Okay, um, so the first thing I guess you, you need to do is, is – figure out what do you want to grow, right? And so um, in this particular case, I have a herb that we're going to use uh, for cooking as kind of some seasoning. Um, and then we have some miniature bell peppers, and these are kind of unique. Uh, things. These are kind of unique because um, they get about one inch, um, about, uh, about one inch in diameter. So maybe just a little bit bigger than a ping pong ball or about that, about that size, and they're really sweet. Um, but, but a thing to consider, okay, is the days of harvest. So it's not like you just plant a seed and then, you know, a week, two weeks, and then, oh, here it is, it's, it's ready, right? These plants, plants need time to grow um, and to develop. Um, and so whenever you're selecting whatever it is you're gonna grow, if you look on the back um, of the package, right, there'll be a, a little number that says days to harvest. Okay, okay, and so for these miniature bell peppers, um, it's 60 days, so about two-ish months, okay, um, these are going to be ready to go, right? So whereas if it was a mature uh, bell pepper, um, like the ones, you know, you might, you might go get at the store, you might be looking at 120 to 150 days depending on, on the various varieties. So this kind of project takes um, – more planning um, than just um, oh I'm just going to do this and it's going to it's going to be great for you know I'll just put a week's effort into it and then I'll have have something um, to eat here at the end okay a lot of these herbs won't have a days till harvest um, you can kind of let them grow um, a, as long as you want um, and they and you can harvest them kind of kind of as you're going so this is a good point to talk about the different types um, of plants that are out there right so you have um, annuals Okay, which basically that their entire life cycle is going to happen within one year or one growing season. So if you plant, um, you plant them in the spring, you harvest them in the fall, and that's it, right? That plant is no longer um, no longer productive and no longer useful. Okay, you can have biannuals, um, which are good for basically two growing seasons. Um, so you plant this spring, right? That plant would be good through basically two years from that planting date. Okay, and then you have annuals, which um, will repeat um, over and over and over again, um, season after season for however long that particular plant is, or that plant's life cycle <laughs> life cycle is. Um, 
So things like um, trees, shrubs, even some ornamental um, plants, okay, can uh, would be annual um, would be annuals or perennials ra rather, and then your annuals are going to be a lot of your crops. So whether that's corn, um, tomatoes, peppers, um, those sorts of things. Okay, so if you have um, a little bit of a uh, little bit of potting soil at home and two uh, little plastic cups you can um, basically make a great little seed starter um, at your house okay and so we're going to fill our, our cup up with our uh, plant growth media in this case this is a topsoil soil and compost mix just like what we talked about before i'm going to go go about two-thirds um, up the cup uh, with with the soil and I'm going to poke uh, I'm going to take some scissors okay um, and I'm going to not run with them okay and I'm going to basically poke two little holes in the bottom um, of this cup and I'm going to kind of move the scissors around to clear those holes out and then I'm going to take a, another cup and I'm going to drop it in you can see there's a little bit of space down there the purpose of that is to prevent okay, the soil from basically, we talked earlier about drowning the seed, and that's not necessarily what we want to do. So those little holes at the bottom are going to allow the soil and plant growth media in here to hold um, as much water um, as it can, and then the excess is going to drain out into the bottom cup, and it's not going to um, you know, go all over the countertop or the windowsill or wherever it is you might have this. Okay, so we have our our cup prepared. Uh, I'm going to put one of the uh, miniature bell peppers in here. The reason why I'm doing these in here and not a situation uh, like this is because, one, um, I'm going to have to transplant these plants later um, to basically a different location because they're going to get uh, too big. Basically, one, to live in here, and um, I'm also uh, me and my wife are moving houses, and so I want to be able to take these with me. So it's really, it's really selfish, selfish reasons there. Um, so what I'm going to do is, okay, we're going to go down to a depth of a quarter of an inch. Okay, I'm just going to cut the top off of these. Okay, so I'm taking four seeds, okay, because... Not there's not a guarantee that all of these seeds are going to germinate, right? Not all of the conditions um, may be met perfectly for this to work out, as well as we may just have a bad seed. Okay? So I'm going to kind of hedge my bets um, with all four of these. So I'm just going to drop them in the cup. Okay, I'm going to kind of space them out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my pointer finger, or if you're one of those people that don't like dirt on your finger, you could take a pencil. Um, also, don't talk to me. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to push these seeds down about a quarter of an inch. Okay, and I'm going to take some of this other material, and I'm going to um, cover them with some of that dirt. I'm then going to take another cup of water, and I'm going to very delicately kind of wet this top of the soil. Okay, so I make sure they get good and uh, saturated. Right, so those enzymes that we talked about can be active, and then I'm going to set this in a sunny place, um, and I'm just going to kind of let it let it work. Right, if I if I come check it and it's really really dry, okay, I'll add a little bit more water, and our days to germination is going to be 10 to 14. So in 10 to 14 days, okay, we should start to see um, some little plants start to come out of the soil. This is an important time to talk about. Uh, that transplanting process. So um, if you've had a plant that you've been growing inside for a couple of weeks, right? And you're like, okay, it's getting too big for its, con its container. I need to move it outside. I need to transplant it. Um, there's a process called hardening. Um, and this is very critical that you don't just take it and just put it outside real quick and then forget about it and, and move on. You'll, your plant basically is not used to um, that environment. It's kind of like if you go to a movie theater, um, like around five or six o'clock, you watch a two and a half hour movie, uh, or, or yeah, right. And then you come outside and it's really dark, and you're like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't really see. Right, your eyes haven't adjusted to the elements. That is a not a good, not a good, not a good analogy. But uh, 
it's kind of like if you're in an air conditioned car and then you get outside and it's really hot and it seems like it's hotter than it is because you're not used to that temperature. That's a better analogy. Same thing. Um, same thing with our plant. So hardening, basically what we're going to do is for a couple hours a day, we're going to put it outside in, um, in, in the sun and let it get used to that direct sunlight, um, that temperature, wind, all those different environmental factors that it needs. Okay, And that's an, that's an important um, process. The good thing about that is if it starts to, you know, if you look at the weather forecast, you see a freeze coming, uh, you can quickly move those things inside. Okay. Um, a lot of plants are actually growing exclusively inside now, uh, and there's been a lot of development um, <laughs> over the past couple of years. Uh, since various industries have arisen in Oklahoma, there's been a lot of um, innovation into grow <laughs> growing plants indoors. Um, and so you could take something like this and you could get a light right, to, to put above it that would give off the correct UV um, the, the correct spectrum of light to be able to grow those plants um, the most efficiently. Um, okay, um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free uh, to reach out to me, um, owen.hosick at sequoiaeagles.net. Um, I appreciate this opportunity to um, be able to, to interact uh, with you guys on, on a weekly basis. Um, it has been fun, um, and it has been um, a learning experience for, my, for myself um, as, as, you know, manage what, you know, what would look good on camera and how would this work? And is this something kids could do at home and, and the, and those kinds of things. Um, didn't get any questions I wouldn't imagine. Okay. Um, thanks again. I hope you guys have a absolutely fantastic summer. Um, hopefully things will, will get back to back normal as, um, quickly, uh, more, qu more quickly than, than later. Um, we have about 15 seconds left. And so, um, again, thank you guys. Have a good summer, and we hope to see you next fall.